Hello everyone. Today we have Maria Arif with us and she has secured All India Rank 10 in GATE 2023. So in this brief interaction, we'll get to know details from her as to how she has prepared for the examination and what uh, was the reason she got such a wonderful rank in this year's GATE examination. So Maria, firstly, congratulations on that wonderful rank. Uh, can you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, thank you very much, sir. As you said, I'm Maria. And my all India rank is 10 this year. And I attempted uh, gate architecture part, part B1. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so, in continuation with that, may uh, can you tell me uh, when did you decide that you would be attempting B1 part? So, was it during the preparation or during the exam? What was your thought process regarding this? Uh, actually, right from the beginning, I knew I would uh, attempt part B1 because history, contemporary architecture, architects and their work, this has always been my strength. I was very bad at building structure, but I knew if I worked on that part, then everything else, uh, pretty, I have good command on everything else. Whereas for planning, everything was new for me. So I was, uh, from the beginning, I knew I would attempt B1 only and work more towards building structure because that is something which is very difficult for me. Okay, so that's a very good insight for our future aspirants. You, they need to identify their code strength areas and then to work on improving them rather than coming up with something new completely. So that's a nice insight, Maya. Thank you on that. Uh, so to continue, uh, can you tell me uh, what was your uh, experience or how, how did you manage your time during the preparation? So uh, what was your average amount of time you spent on a daily basis? What else, what did you do to manage time in an efficient manner during the preparation? Uh, so I started, I decided to be paid sometime in July and I started preparing uh, close to July, August. I was doing self-study, but then I realized that the amount of the portion that is given uh, as a syllabus is very vast and everything under the sky comes in it. So I understood that I might not be able to cover everything. So uh, I was still struggling July, August, September. Then October, I joined the coaching KP classes. Um, then I got a perspective as to what and how much to be covered. So in from July to August, September, I was studying around two to three hours, five hours per day. From October onwards, I was studying morning. I used to study say five to eight because I have a two-year-old son. So I used to study when he was asleep. And I was working as well from home. So I had to kind of juggle. So in the morning, I was studying 5 to 8 because he would sleep. In the, in the afternoon, again, some 2 to 3 or 4 or 5, the time when he sleeps. And in the uh, evening, I used to attend the classes. So that is how I plan my day. So every day, this used to be scheduled morning 5 to 8 and afternoon some 2 to 3 hours and evening classes. Oh, that is really wonderful and it is a huge motivation to all our future aspirants because students tend to have a lot of excuses. We have thesis, so how can I take classes? How can I prepare for gate exam? I have my internship. How can I take classes and prepare for gate exam? These are the excuses which students tend to have sometimes or they tend to give these excuses to themselves. So you will really be a huge inspiration because you... By, along with managing your family, your son and managing your home-based work already, so you're already working from home uh, as an architect, you're already practicing. And along with that, you also have prepared and also have taken the classes. So that's a wonderful uh, inspiration for all, for all of future aspirants. Uh, that's really commendable, Maria. And moving further, uh, can you tell me, uh, did you experience any sort of stress during the examination, during the last uh, few months or last few weeks? Because you started preparing probably from July. Uh, so... Was there a pressure on your mind uh, that you have invested so much of effort? Uh, what if you do not uh, uh, do well in the exam? Was there any stress regarding this? Yes, yes. I was extremely stressed. In fact, I could not manage my stress very well. Uh, after I joined the classes, I knew how much I had to work. And I knew that my self-study was not up to the mark at all. Uh, because in the classes, I got different perspective. I actually knew as to what is important, how important previous year are, how to study a topic conceptually. So I had to work on a lot of 
things which I was doing simultaneously. But uh, by because I was I was not sleeping enough and getting up in the morning. Actually, I was very unwell the last week of the exam, the week before the exam. Uh, so it is because I did not manage my stress very well. I I was very anxious as to what if all the study goes waste. What if uh, whatever I have taught, whatever I have been taught, and whatever I have read does not come in the exam. What if the entire paper is new when I am totally blank? And what if I have to struggle for a year more? So uh, this should not happen. But this happened, and I could not study the for the exam because of this. So, so then I set a very bad example in handling stress because I was extremely stressed for no reason. My preparation was sufficient, and I should have been confident because I, I did, uh, I I read all the notes. I had solved most of the section test. I had solved the mock up mock test. I had done the previous year question sum two to three times, so I should have been confident, but I was not. I was very nervous. <laughs> so that's also good insight. People should be confident on their studies and their preparation. Uh, so, can you briefly tell me uh, regarding notes? Uh, how did you maintain your handmade notes, or did you use? Did you prepare any notes to revise from? What was your strategy for preparing notes and revision part? Uh, so whatever was done in the class, I had my running notes for that. Apart from that, uh, I used to make it a point that say, for example, urban design subject was covered in four days in the class. So in those four days, I would uh, also read from the notes given by the coaching and from NBC or any of the standards if I have to read and cover and finish up that subject in that four day duration. And I, uh, I basically make a IPC for less important points copy. I have been always doing that since my school days. So basically, it's a copy where I write six hundred pages of notes. So I only write the important points in one to two page, not more than that. So those notes, uh, then I revise almost every day, every alternate day. And my IPC was only some fifty, sixty pages uh, thick, which had all the portion, like the entire portion of the game. All the important points written on that. So I was only revising that in January. Nothing new, like doing that. Wonderful. So you made a crisp short notes from which you have studied in the last few days for revision part. That's wonderful. Uh, so and uh, you were talking about the subject structures. You told that it was your weak area and you had to work towards it. So uh, how how would how did you do the structures based questions when they were asked in the examination? Uh, could you could you attempt those questions or it was still your it still remained your weak area also? There were two questions, uh, new two numerical sum structures. Uh, one I did correctly. The other I I made a conceptual mistake. So yes, I could not attempt the second question. Okay, but you were. The, I, didn't, I, I think it did not stay your weak area even towards the end of the preparation structures. You were confident enough. I think that's the reason you could answer one question correctly. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, even in the coaching when it was taught, it took some two, three, two, two and a half, three. I don't remember. I gave my hundred percent, but even then I knew that uh, I don't have that much of a command, and I thought I will not uh, invest a lot of time beyond this also. So I was doing. I knew I I can solve easy to medium question, but I can't solve conceptual and difficult question for structures. I knew that. Uh, because I know how much I have understood the concept and how good I am at it, so I could solve one and I could not solve one in the exam. Also. That's wonderful. You should know your strong areas. You should know where to boost up your score, where not to work a lot, and where where you cannot go beyond a particular limit. It is all important in the process of learning. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, that's wonderful, Maria. And uh, towards the end. Can you uh, tell me, uh, uh, is there anything you feel that future aspirants should know or should keep in mind during the preparation for GATE exam? Any one or two points which you think are most important, crucial? Uh, I think the most important for preparation is one has to be serious about the exam. You can't just walk in and think that, oh, you have uh, that I will somehow score or it's an MSQ or MCQ design series. You know, GATE will test. The concept to the core, one has to be conceptually very strong, is what I think for uh, for cracking the exam. Uh, the other is uh, that uh, uh, coaching is definitely very important because it gives a perspective. You kind of prioritize as to what topics to study, to which extent to study, and from what angle to study. But apart from that, uh, 
how attentive you have been in your five years of architecture course also matters a lot because they test uh, the holistic knowledge of of an individual so it boils down to how well you have done in your graduation or how serious you were in your graduation also is what i felt absolutely yeah no not this time i think overall gate is always a concept it's true that gate is a conceptual examination uh, it's not an exam where time is an issue because they give you more than 2 minutes per question which is uh, the reason behind that is because it's a concept based examination and that's the reason we always work on concepts even in the classes and all so yeah that's a good insight maria uh, i wish you all success in your future i wish you get into the college which you are aspiring to your phd in your preferred college and your preferred course and your preferred topic uh, wish you all success uh, and we are really proud and happy of your success and i am sure your success will always be an inspiration for the future students at our kp gate classes thanks for taking out this time and giving your insights on this maria uh, it has been a wonderful interview with you thank you very much sir and i am very thankful to the institute uh, because of the kind of guidance that i have got uh, every topic was covered very comprehensively apart from that the notes are self sufficient and we have enough test section test practices mock test to test our knowledge so it if if i, I followed the coaching very blindly and it it has obviously reached results Thanks a lot, Maria. Thanks for the encouraging words for us. We will keep guiding students even in the future with that encouragement. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.